This is Max Rothman with BevNet. We're here at Expo East at the Skyland Foods booth with Brandon Partridge, founder and CEO. They market Ibex drinkable yogurt. Brandon, how's the show going? Uh, it's been great. This is our first year down on the main show floor, uh, so we're still sort of getting our finding our way and kind of learning the rhythms of the show. But um, traffic's been very good, and you know, feedback from uh, from from guests has been very positive. Aside from the standard creating brand awareness, what are some of your primary goals here at the show? We uh, have just. Uh, just this summer launched our organic line of products. Uh, we have a new broker. We're working with Tazi and Associates to develop natural and specialty kind of consume customers on the East Coast. Um, and so, you know, for us, this is an opportunity now with, with working with Tazi, where you've, we've pitched three different regions of Whole Foods. We're talking to some other chain customers. Uh, we've primarily been distributed just in our home, Baltimore, Washington region, and we really see the next few months as a time for us to really kind of expand our footprint and, you know, sort of uh, both awareness and interest in the brand and, and, you know, get the products into more stores. As the Ibex brand has grown into itself, you've really shifted the concept. Um, yeah. Tell me a bit about that, uh, the unification process and, you know, the steps you've made and why it was a good decision in your mind. Yeah, so when we initially brought Ibex to market about a year ago, it had a slightly different profile than it has now. It was um, really organized around functional benefits and the line was distinguished by the fact that each flavor had a different health benefit associated with it. We did that, we thought that would be sort of a source of uniqueness and a way to differentiate ourselves. And really what we learned in, a rel in sort of our initial steps out into the market was that mostly consumers <laughs> kind of seemed to find that confusing. Uh, and really, they just, if they liked the ginger flavor, they wanted the ginger flavor, they weren't really that concerned with what benefit it conveyed. So earlier this year, we sort of pulled back uh, and in, in a relatively short period of time, we we're able to reformulate around a single set of benefits across the whole product. So we now, uh, it is organic drinkable yogurt with probiotics, prebiotic fiber, um, eight grams of naturally occurring protein, and we use considerably less sugar. We sweeten with a very moderate amount of, or moderate amount of organic cane sugar, uh, but considerably less than a lot of our competitive products. That's certainly something that we get a lot of positive feedback about from our customers and also from consumers. So what have been some of the positive outcomes of the simplification of this concept of, of the brand? Well, going from a system where we had a different health benefit in each flavor to the, to the model we have now, uh, it really simplified things at, at the manufacturing point. I mean, essentially, for, to make four flavors, we were making four different yogurts. Um, and so, and it's one of the reasons why when we first came to market, we were not organic because just the incremental cost of that on top of the cost we'd imposed on ourselves, frankly, by approaching it that way was just sort of not going to allow us to be competitive. Uh, because of the simplification of manufacturing now within a unified formula, we've been, you know, permitted our ourselves to be able to source organic ingredients, work with organic farmers to source our milk, and, and get the our, our product certified and come to market that way, and frankly, at the same price point as we were before. So it's really, um, you know, stores have been responded very favorably to the fact that we've gone organic and our price point hasn't moved. Um, and just that simplified positioning around probiotics, prebiotics, and protein, and less sugar, it's just been a much simpler proposition for us to take to people and kind of pitch to them and explain to them. And the, as I said, the feedback's been very positive. How do you view the category at this time? Um, the competitors, I mean, do you, do you see other brands at your level right now um, that are kind of going toe to toe? I know obviously Lifeway is, you know, they're a pretty fully established brand, um, but also have a different proposition and positioning. Um, how do you view the category right now? Yeah, you know, the thing about, it's, it's interesting. So the broader yogurt category has been a booming area for a number of years. Um, drinkable in the U.S. is, is a much less, it's, it's a, we view it as a really underdeveloped opportunity. It's one of the reasons we were drawn, drawn to it as an option. Um, you know, we always joke that Americans value convenience more than any other culture, and yogurt still generally requires you to hold a cup in one hand and a spoon in the other hand. So uh, drinkable for us seems like a natural. Uh, Lifeway certainly, you know, they do a, a, a major portion of their business is in sort of a larger 32 ounce package. So it's more of a multi-serve format versus our individual, our sort of single serve units. Uh, Stonyfield has some drinkable products. Some of the other kind of mainstream yogurt brands have drinkable products, but we really see it as underdeveloped. And frankly, I was saying, I've said to people today at the show, you know, it might be a rare case where we would benefit from some more competition simply to kind of develop more interest in the in that sort of subcategory. When you look at brands like Kavita, Good Belly, even kombucha brands of all kinds, one word comes up, probiotic. Yeah. It's a category that is not so easily defined. What do you how do you view it? Do you think it's a sustainable one? You know, when we look when we went through this reformulation process um, earlier this year, the one feature of our products that that 
really resonated with people was the probiotic benefit. Uh, that, and we also use a prebiotic fiber, uh, fiber also being a, a very powerful trend. And one of, for our product, we, we like the, the fact that those things sort of enhance one another um, and provide that additional benefit. In the case of yogurt, you know, probiotics are something that have been highly identified with that category for a long time. In the case of Kavita, Good Belly, some of the kombuchas, you know, it's essentially newer and different ways to consume something for that benefit. Um, I see that, I mean, it's been a big growth area, uh, you know, along with protein, where, you know, has been sort of emerging for a number of years. It, you know, it's sort of getting to the point now where it doesn't feel like a trend. It feels like a shift in a way that people want to consume products, the types of benefits they're seeking, you know, how they, whether they sort of feel it in terms of the benefits that it conveys to the body. But uh, all the feedback we get is very powerful. I did, I will say with respect to yogurt, I don't know that it's a powerful differentiator because it is so widely, uh, it's so widely associated with the yogurt category. It's one of the reasons we went with sort of the complementary fiber to go along with that because we felt like just the probiotic, if we came to market as the probiotic drinkable yogurt, I wasn't sure that would be a, a powerful basis of differentiation. But certainly, you know, I think it's beneficial that to drive consumer awareness and interest in probiotics that they're available in these alternate categories and other forms.